हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ केमिस्ट्री टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ एन एम आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी एज वी नो द सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ एन एम आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज लेस दैन द अदर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक बिकॉज द एनर्जी डिफरेंस बिटवीन द लो टू हाई एनर्जी स्टेट इज वेरी लो विच इज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ थर्मल एनर्जी दैट इज स्मॉल के टी and therefore it leaves a very little population axis in the lower energy state therefore the signal we obtain is comparatively weak and sometimes merge in the noise which is inevitably generated by the spectrometer the population difference between the low and the high energy state can be calculated by the well known boltzmann distribution law according to this law the number of nuclei that are present in the high energy state Two number of nuclei that are present in the low energy state is equal to exponential of minus delta E upon K T. In simplified form, it can be written as one minus delta E upon K T, where this K is the Boltzmann constant with the value one point three eight one into ten raised to the power minus twenty three joules per Kelvin. and this t is the absolute temperature in kelvins to increase the number of nuclei in the low energy state this factor must be less than 1 and more than 0 so this can be improved by increase either increasing the delta e or by decreasing this factor kt since k is the constant therefore if we change the temperature or we decrease the temperature we can increase this overall term if we decrease the temperature the kinetic energy of the nuclei that are present in the low energy state decreases and therefore they cannot easily go to the high energy state so this is one way how we can improve this term but in this case if we go beyond 0 degree centigrade in most of the cases the sample gets freeze so we cannot go in most of the cases beyond 0 degree centigrade as is the case of water molecule to increase this term the other way is to increase the delta e here in this case delta e is equal to h nu precision this can be written as dynamagnetic ratio h cross b not here h cross is h upon 2 pi where h is the planck's constant since this term is constant therefore we can vary either gyromagnetic ratio or b not since gyromagnetic ratio is the characteristic property of nuclei here some of the nuclei with their gyromagnetic ratio are represented in the table proton nmr the gyromagnetic ratio is 267.53 into 10 raised to the power 6 radians per second per tesla similarly for deuterium nuclei it is 41.1 and if we see this fluorine 19 is having 251.7 into 10 raised to the power 6 radians per second per tesla that is the reason why proton and fluorine nuclei are more sensitive towards the nmr spectroscopy as compared to the other nuclei in comparison to this carbon 13 which is having low value for this gyromagnetic ratio this gyromagnetic ratio is basically depends on the type of the nuclei which are having high value of this gyromagnetic ratio are more sensitive as compared to the others on the other hand if we increase the applied external magnetic field then the energy difference of low to high energy state increases and therefore the population in the low energy state increases according to this formula so here some of the values are given for proton nmr which is having gyromagnetic ratio 267.53 radians per second per tesla at 25 degree centigrade if we are applying the external magnetic field of 1.41 tesla that is 60 megahertz is the operating frequency of the spectrometer then only nine nuclei are in excess and if we increase this applied external magnetic field the number of nuclei present in the 
low energy state for this proton nuclei at 25 degrees centigrade increases. In this way, we can improve the number of axes of nuclei in the low energy state and therefore increase the sensitivity of the NMR spectrometer. On the other hand, one can improve the signal intensity by repeating the experiment for number of times to increase the signal to noise ratio. This is also known as signal averaging. To increase the signal to noise ratio, suppose we have carried out or we repeated the experiment for n number of times, then the signal to noise ratio is equal to n, the number of experiments, divided by under root n. Since on every repetition of the experiment, the amplitude of the signal increases by n, however, the amplitude of the noise increases by under root n. There are different calculations are involved to get this formula, so we are not going into that. So this is the formula to improve the signal to noise ratio. If we repeat the experiment 4 times, suppose, then signal increases by 4, however, the noise increases by under root 4 times. In this way, after solving this equation, we are getting that our signal is improved by 2 times. This can be understood by this figure. Since every repetition, our signal will be at the same position. However, the noise is not certain and it can be at any place. That is why the intensity of the signal improve by n times. However, the intensity of the or the amplitude of the noise increases by under root n times. So in this way, by improving gyromagnetic ratio B0 or decreasing the temperature, or by repeating the number of experiments, one can improve the signal intensity in NMR spectrometer. I hope you find this lecture informative. Thanks for watching.